I remember when I first became the president of Simmons, someone asked, why would you want to become the president of a simple Bible college? Well, that's because they had limited vision of who Simmons was and what Simmons could become. Let me tell you why telling our story, especially our historical narrative, is critically important because it is by the study of history that we learn the lessons of history. Simmons, which was established in 1879, at one time was one of the premier private black colleges uh, in the United States. In fact, it was the only institution in America that had a law school medical school, liberal arts college, governed by black people. So it was the personification of black empowerment. History teaches us. Secondly, we need to know our history because history inspires us. What happened to Simmons is what happened to many institutions, especially black institutions, as a result of the depression of 1929. The banks foreclosed on them, they lost their property, and the University of Louisville purchased the property. Tragic is the story of an institution that pioneered education, integrated the University of Louisville, integrated Southern Baptist Seminary, got dropped off the consciousness of the city from our curriculum to our degrees and even our sororities. The oldest Delta chapter in America started at Simmons University. Th this type of history was here in Louisville all along, but our community did not know. And that is why black institutions are so vitally important because black institutions help keep the story of the black experience in this country alive. We learn what happened so that we will have the courage to fix it and correct uh, many of the injustices of the past. To understand for example, race relations in the present. Well, it has its roots in race relations in the past. September 15th, 1963. It was the day of the Youth Day Sunday service at 16th Street Baptist Church in Birmingham, Alabama. March 13th, 2020. This will be a date that will stay etched in the hearts and minds of people throughout our city. Four little girls, Addie Mae Collins, Denise McNair, Carol Robertson, and Cynthia Wesley. In Louisville, this is not just about George Floyd. This is about a woman named Breonna Taylor. They were all there getting ready, making final adjustments on their beautiful white dresses. when the bomb exploded. 911, Operator Harris, where is their emergency? Because I don't, I don't even know what's happening. Somebody kicked in the door inside my girlfriend. We were hearing that 911 call from Breonna Taylor's boyfriend. <laughs> oh my God. The entire nation in outrage. How could such a tragedy happen? What a horrible act of racial terrorism. Show the damage caused by the police after they fired more than 20 rounds. Taylor was hit at least eight times. There was one person, a young lawyer named Charles Morgan Jr. When the picture of the 26 year old started circling social media. And when he got up in front of a group of his white peers. Proudly holding a diploma, people started to listen and question why she died. He said, who threw that bomb? Was it a Negro? Was it a white? And he looked at that room and he said, we all did it. But really, it's all of us who must overcome the crippling legacy of bigotry and injustice. And we shall overcome. 1967 and 2020 are very similar. It's something that was happening in other parts of the country and would happen again, unfortunately, unless this country proposes to commit its conscience and its resources to changing our course of action. And we haven't done it. President Lyndon Johnson appointed an 11 member advisory commission on civil disorders aimed to identify the root cause. 
court did not excuse the rioters, but put their actions into context with their hopeless situation. They were called riots, but they were really rebellions against systemic and structural injustice. It provided both causes of the situation. They clearly said in this report, white America created this situation. And possible remedies. And guess what? White America is maintaining. The civil unrest in 1967. These riots had a devastating effect. Mirroring that in 2020. The basic conclusion of the current commission. And we summed up with this line from the report. Our nation is, is moving toward two societies. One black and one, one white, separate and unequal. The tragedies of the 20th century. President Johnson did not act on the recommendations that were made in the report. And here we are, 52 years later. And what do we see? And that's exactly what the Justice Department found, that there was a culture specifically of discrimination against the black members of the community using dogs, racial epitaphs, and a failure to even identify and or correct it. I'm sure did not come as a surprise to the black community and others in Louisville. It led to uh, Breonna Taylor's demise. And unfortunately, had the police department taken corrective measures in monitoring this, perhaps she would be with us today. This is why we had Colonel Commission 2.0. Three years to the month of the police shooting death of Breonna Taylor, the United States Department of Justice makes an announcement. When you look at what the DOJ report is saying, pattern of discriminatory behavior, not a few bad apples. Basically, your department as a whole targeting communities, it's usually a community of color, it's somewhat financially depressed. It said the same thing in 1967. There are a whole host of other problems in that community. And now you're unleashing, uh, these units are often known for being quite aggressive. And here we are 55 years later, and the DOJ report is an echo of the Kerner Report of 67. It's something that was happening in other parts of the country and would happen again, unfortunately, unless this country proposes to commit its conscience and its resources to changing our course of action. And we haven't done it. So what happens now? How do you correct this? We need economic democracy. Too few people have too much and too many have virtually nothing. As we seek to overcome racial separation, class division is now haunting us. You know, bear with me for a minute. It says self-respect and not self-degradation matters. Self-respect must be more important than the dollar. The Jesse Lewis Jackson Sr. Center for Racial Justice will spearhead a national movement towards a just, more equitable society. All of the work done by Simmons College of Kentucky has led us to such a time as this. It's moving the black community from disparity to equity through black institutional empowerment. You fix this, you can fix almost anything. The Jesse Lewis Jackson Sr. Center for Racial Justice 